Now we're going to talk about the economic production quantity. The textbook calls this the production order quantity, but they are the same philosophy and it's going to get you to the same end result. So it doesn't matter whether you use the economic production quantity uh, formula that I'm going to provide to you during this lecture, or if you use what is provided in the textbook of the production order quantity model. They will both give you the same answer. Now the difference with the economic production model and the economic order model is exactly how it sounds. With the economic order quantity, you're ordering a specific amount, generally from a supplier, and so if you order 300 pieces, you're going to get a delivery of 300 pieces. With the economic production quantity, you're going to be building this or manufacturing this at your facility. So you might create an order for 300 units, but as you are creating those orders, you can also use the products as they are finished and completed. So it's the economic production quantity. This is something that you're doing in manufacturing internally. This is one of the three inventory models for independent demand. This is the economic production quantity model. So um, just like with the economic order of quantity, uh, there are a lot of assumptions that are exactly the same as the economic order quantity uh, model assumptions, and so we'll go through those here in just a second. So the EPQ is used when inventory builds up over a period of time after an order is placed. Units um, are used when units are produced and sold simultaneously. The assumptions of the economic production quantity model are similar to EOQ, except that orders are received incrementally during production. Okay, so those are some of the differences there um, between the economic production quantity model and the economic order quantity model. Some of the similarities between the models are that it's only one item is involved, so just one skew. The annual demand is known. The usage rate is constant. The production rate is constant. Lead time is known and constant. And there are no quantity discounts available. So again, the big difference is this one right here in the middle. I probably should have put it in a different color. But usage occurs continually, but production occurs periodically. So that is the big difference between the EPQ and the EOQ model. Here's what it looks like um, if we were to, to put it into a chart. This is not to scale, but essentially you can see on the far left hand side that your run size or your economic production quantity, you're going to be building a specific amount. You're going to be producing it internally. You're going to, uh, it's, there is a cumulative production. So you're going to be building one unit, then two, then three, then four, then five. And if your economic production quantity is 300, you'll never actually have 300 on hand because you get to use them as you build them. So just like an economic order quantity had an average annual inventory, the economic production quantity has um, a maximum inventory level or an I max. Okay, so a maximum inventory level. So this is your inventory cycle. Okay, so a lot like the economic order quantity with the exception of you're going to be building units and using them sim simultaneously, and you're going to have an average inventory or a maximum inventory that is never uh, as high as your economic production run size. So your economic production quantity equation, this is what's given in the textbook in the top. This is the um, production order quantity formula up top, where lowercase p is your daily production or delivery rate. Lowercase d is your annual demand or usage rate. And the alternative equation, which again is what I'm providing as the economic order quantity, it makes more sense intuitively and it's easier to calculate. Forget the colors for just a second, but your economic order quantity is the square root of two multiplied by annual demand, multiplied by your setup cost, divided by your holding cost, then you're gonna multiply that by the square root of your daily production over your daily production minus your daily demand, okay? So one thing I wanna point out, up top is your production order quantity formula provided by the textbook. That'll give you the right answer if you wanna use it. Down below, if you notice and you pay attention, 
the EOQ formula is what I've highlighted in red. Okay, so your economic production quantity formula is taking your EOQ, but then you're adding the curveball of the daily production and daily demand. So everything in this bottom quadrant is the actual economic production quantity formula, but you can see it's changed by what is in blue. So here is the slide with all of the calculations and the formulas that you will need uh, for calculating the economic production quantity. Your total cost is a lot like the total cost in the economic order quantity. You've got your annual demand multi uh, divided by the uh, quantity, multiplied by your setup cost, plus your maximum inventory level divided by two, multiplied by your holding costs. So that is your total annual cost uh, calculation. Your maximum inventory level, or your IMAX, equals the quantity multiplied by one, and then you're going to subtract your daily demand over your daily production rate. So that is your maximum inventory level. Your number of production runs is simply N equals annual demand divided by the quantity. Your expected time between orders is your number of working days per year divided by your number of production runs. Those two formulas are exactly the same as they are in the EOQ. And then in the very bottom here, your Q with the asterisk or your economic production quantity, you may use either formula, the one on the left or the one on the right. I prefer the one on the right, and I will show you why in just a second here. So let's do our first example. Your economic production quantity example number one is Nathan Manufacturing makes and sells specialty hubcaps for the retail automo automobile aftermarket. Nathan's forecast for its wire wheel hubcap is 1,000 units next year, with an average daily demand of 4 units. However, the production process is most efficient at 8 units per day. So the company produces 8 per day, but only uses 4 per day. The company wants to solve for the optimum number of units per order. Setup costs are $10 and holding costs are 50 cents per unit. Note this plant schedules production of the hubcap only as needed during the 250 days per year the shop operates. So everything that was given to you is your annual demand, your uppercase D is 1,000 units. Your setup costs or your S is $10. Your holding cost, or your H, is 50 cents. Your daily production rate, your lower case P, is 8 units per day. Your daily demand rate is your lower case D, and that's 4 units per day. And this example, it just works out. Note that 4 units per day was given, but you could calculate out your daily demand all by yourself with the information that was given. You've got 100 units per year as your annual demand, and you could have divided that by 250 days per year to give you four units per day. So it was given to you, but you could also calculate it yourself with the information that was provided. So let's real quickly do the POQ or the EOQ uh, formula. You can see on the left-hand side, you are entering the information that was provided to you um, you, you put it together, you do one square root, you take the square root of 80,000 units, that gives you 2.82.8, .8, which you round up, and that gives you 283 hubcaps. You can see the equation that I prefer just because it's a little bit more intuitive. You calculate your EOQ, and that would be 200 units, but you're going to multiply that by 1.41 because that is derived from taking the square root of your um, demand and your daily production rate. So 8 over 8 minus 4 gives you, uh, that gives you 2. And then the square root of 2 is 1.4. So your answer is 283 hubcaps for the EPQ equation as well. So either one gets you to 283. All right, let's do one more example for EPQ. A toy manufacturer uses 48,000 rubber wheels per year for its popular dump truck series. The firm makes its own wheels, which it can produce at a rate of 80 
uh, 800 per day. The toy trucks are assembled uniformly over the entire year. Carrying cost is $1 per wheel a year. Setup cost for production runs are $45. The firm operates 240 days per year. So let's determine the optimal run size, which is your EPQ. Let's calculate the maximum inventory level, or your IMAX. And let's calculate the minimum total cost for carrying and setup, or our total cost. Now, one thing I want to point out. On an exam or a quiz, I might say, calculate the optimal run size, or the minimum total cost for carrying and setup. I might not say calculate the EOQ or EPQ, but you have to be able to determine based off of the information that is provided to you, whether you use the EOQ or the EPQ formula. Because you know that they are producing them at 800 per day, and how many days the firm is operating per year, you know that they're, uh, this is the economic production quantity because they are producing this item. So you use the EPQ formula not the EOQ formula. Okay, so this is all the information that was given to you. You have to calculate out your daily demand because it was not given to you. You need to calculate your lower case D. So annual demand was given, 48,000 wheels per year. Setup cost was given, $45 per order. Holding cost was given, $1 per wheel per year. Production rate, your lower case P, was 800 wheels per day. So we will calculate our daily demand by taking 48,000 wheels per year and divided by the amount of days that, um, that you're working or producing products, which is 240 days per year. So you're gonna produce, or you're gonna have, sorry, not produce, you're producing 800 wheels per day, but your daily demand is 200 wheels per day. So first, let's calculate our economic production quantity. And we do that by adding in all of the information that was provided to us for two multiplied by 48,000, which is our annual demand, multiplied by our setup cost, which is $45, and divided by one, which is our holding cost. You take the square root of that. And then on the right-hand side, we know that our um, production rate is 800 wheels per day. And we know that our daily demand is 200 wheels per day. So when you add up the answer for the left-hand side square root and the right-hand side square root, you're going to get 2,400, and that is your economic production quantity. Now let's calculate the maximum inventory level so that we can calculate our total cost. We can't calculate the total cost without the IMAX, so we have to calculate that next. So the IMAX is straightforward. We're going to take our 2,400, which is our economic production quantity, we're going to multiply that by 1 over our daily demand divided by our daily production, which is 800 wheels per day. And that's going to give us 1,800 wheels as our maximum inventory level. So just think about that for a second. Your economic production quantity is that you're going to build 2,400 wheels at a time. You are never going to have more than 1,800 wheels in inventory because you're going to be using them as you make them. So you're going to be producing 2,400 wheels at a time and your maximum inventory level will be 1,800 wheels at any given time. Lastly, let's calculate our total cost. And our total cost is derived by taking our annual demand over our quantity and our quantity is 2,400 uh, wheels, multiplied by our uh, setup cost, which is $45. And we're gonna add that to our 1,800 wheels, which is our maximum inventory level, divided by two, and multiply that by our holding cost. So for this example, just like with the economic order quantities, you can see that you're calculating 900 as your cost for setup, and 900 as your cost for holding, so you know that you have the lowest total cost because both the holding costs and the setup costs are equal to each other. So your total cost is $1,800 per year. And you've now solved two economic production quantity exams.